Uh, my name is Melissa Partridge and I am an accounting student here at BYU-Idaho and I have lived all over. I grew up in Southern California, lived in St. Louis for a little while, lived in Rexburg for a little bit, lived in Boise and all over Montana and now back in Rexburg. I don't remember too many details. I was five when I was diagnosed and I would, I got sick a lot and my mom was worried so she would take me to the doctor. He's like, oh, she's fine. She's a normal five-year-old. And then I started peeing my pants a lot. My mom's like, okay, this is weird. So she took me in, the doctor's like, she's fine. She's a normal five-year-old. And then I got even more sick and I was losing weight. They took me back into the doctor and the doctor said, they did blood work, they checked me out. They said, she's fine. She's just a normal five-year-old. So then we went on a family vacation and on the family vacation, we were gonna be gone for a week. I went through a week's worth of underwear in the, the drive. And um, by the time we got there, my parents were already so mad and frustrated with me and they didn't know what was wrong. And my aunt, who is a type one diabetic said, um, let me check her blood sugars. So she checked my blood sugars and they were over, well, it just said high because it was too high. So that meant it was over, I think 400 back in those days mm -hmm. on her machine. And so they, sent me to, they took me to the hospital and they found out my blood sugars were close to 1,000 and they, that's how I was diagnosed. And I have a little bit of memory in the hospital, but not, not too much. It was more fun than anything. Well, as a teenager, I got to a point where diabetes was no big deal. And so I treated it like it was no big deal. And sometimes I would stop taking my insulin just because I would just insulin. Like, and so I would go high a, a lot. And then <laughs> to show that I was low back in those days, you could add a drop of alcohol onto your strip to lower your blood sugars. And so I would do that a little bit as a teenager, but um, I didn't like that because I felt horrible the way that it made me feel. So I learned how to get back in control, and that was just a little phase probably in junior high. And then um, probably the next hard phase was when I decided to start having children. And just when I was pregnant, just the toll that it took on me emotionally knowing that any mistake that I made affected another human being. And so now being a mother, that's a huge thing on me all the time. It's like, if I don't take care of myself, it doesn't just like affect me, it affects my children, it affects my parenting style, it affects everything. And so my children are really good about helping me stay in control. If I'm really mad, they're like, mom, go check your blood sugars. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm just mad, I'm not high, I'm just mad. So they're really fun and they, they like to learn more about it. And my son says he's gonna cure me someday, so I love that. He says he's gonna cut my belly open and fix my, my pancreas. Yeah, it's helped motivate me. It's helped, you know, I, I've talked to some people who it scares them, but to me it helps motivate me. I need to be healthier for my children. So I take care of myself better and I'm able to take care of my kids better and they're healthier. And so I think it, it helps progress me in a positive way. Instead of so I started looking on the diabetic online community and learning more there. And I researched an organization called Diabetes Sisters specifically for women with diabetes and I noticed that they had these different conferences throughout the country and they were giving a full ride scholarship to somebody to go to it. And so, oh, I just, and so I, um, I applied for it and I got it. And that was so exciting because I was able to fly out to North Carolina and meet hundreds of other females with diabetes and talk to specialists and get advice and get all this information that you don't learn from the 15 minute doctor appointment that you have every few months or from, you know, WebMD or whatever it may be. Learning from all these experts who have diabetes was a great resource and that was really exciting. And then I've been able to come back and bring that knowledge with me and share it with other people here at BYU-Idaho through the diabetic health group that we helped start here on campus. If you want to learn about diabetes, either they're going into that field or they have family members or friends who are diabetics to help educate them because I really believe that education is power. I would tell them, basically we hear this a lot, is diabetes doesn't define you. You define diabetes and um, it's a part of your life. Like Somebody once asked me, what would life be like if you didn't have diabetes? And I said, what would life be like if we didn't have arms? Like it's just, it's just natural, it's just part of me. But it's not who I am. I am separate from my diabetes and I can um, do anything that I want. Diabetes doesn't stop me. It hasn't stopped me yet from anything that I've wanted to do. You know, you have to plan. You have to take care of yourself and you have to organize your life so 
so that way you can accomplish everything you need to do. And I think that's one of the benefits of having diabetes is it forces you to be organized, to be on top of the ball, to plan for emergencies, whatever it may be. And that has helped save me in lots of different aspects of life, not just with my health. There are so many blessings that has come from this as far as me being able to help other people, um, me learning how to be compassionate, me learning that life doesn't revolve around me, and having to ask for help. That's one important thing that a lot of people don't learn. And as diabetics, we have to sometimes ask for help and it's okay. And people are willing to help. And I've learned a lot about compassion from other people who have been able to help me when I've been in need. Uh -oh.